But I wanted to show you how I put on my binding. I cut a two and a half inch strip like this, and then I fold it over and I iron it. And then I put my strip so that one, the raw edge is facing uh, the right or the edge of the table runner. And then I always make sure that the joint from one strip to another is down here. If I just kind of mimic what I'm going to do, I'm going to go like this, and then I'm going to fold it up, and I'll go down like that. And I want this joint to be past this corner. About six or seven inches works out pretty well for the rest of the table runner. So that's where I like to see it. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on and I am using the Juki TL18. A lot of times I use my uh, Juki F300 to put it on and but I decided not to today to try and film this. So I leave a good 10 inches uh, not adhered at first. For me, what works the best is I have a quarter inch marking here and I have a number 10 right here. And I want to be in the middle. And when I put it in the middle on my sewing machine, that's perfect. But you will be able to see on your sewing machine uh, what works for you. All right, and I tuck that back behind. And I do use my gloves. So because just like in quilting, I want to make sure that I can grip it. It helps me move the table runner around when I have a little bit more grip on my hands. So now I'm going to go forward three and I go back three or two. And now I'm just going to go forward. Now a lot of people use a walking foot and I do sometimes, but in this case it's working pretty well. Uh, just using the regular foot that it comes with. It comes with a lot of feet, but this is the one that um, I think is a standard presser foot. I'm not sure. You guys can tell me what the name is. I just call it my standard pressing foot. Now, sometimes it will push along, and at that those times I see that, I raise up the foot just a little bit to try and relieve that. So I want to be just... If you notice, here's a 10 right here. And I am actually on the inside of that. And your machine, you might need to measure out the quarter inch. I like to be around a quarter inch. I don't want to be on the skinny side. And the other thing that I do is sometimes with batting and everything else, you'll have a little bit of variance, like you can see right here. It's not by much, it's only by probably a thread or two at the most. I just lay the, the binding so that it remains straight. I think as long as you do things consistently, it works out really well. <laughs> It has gotten really dark here, you guys. So the camera is looking, the picture is looking dark, but it is really dark here. So I've got lights on and we're doing our best, but it is super dark. It is going to storm. Well, it is storming right now, but yeah. So but I wanted to capture this and see if I could show
So I'm sorry it has a yellow tint to it. Not usually like that here <laughs> in this room. coming to this corner and this is where I like to kind of see where is my end so for me if I press down I can see my end is here so let's go ahead and do that so that you can see it and well I don't usually do this I'm doing it so you can see so I want to come within a quarter of an inch about like there and I raise my foot and I put it so that I am at a quarter of a, so I'm at an angle. So here's my point right down in there and here's the end. So it's like a 45 degree angle. All right. And I'm going to come down my 45 degree angle. One more. And I'm going back up. I don't know if anybody else does this, backs up like I do, but I just think it's good. And I'll take two more stitches and I do cut off the thread. And I don't tuck those threads, those I just cut off. <laughs> Cause I have already, you know, doubled over my stitches and everything else. So I feel very confident of it. And then what I do is, here's the, binding like this and I take my binding and I turn it I just take it and pull it up straight let's see if I can get a good picture on that in this on this dark day I pull it up straight and it makes like an angle just like that now I take this same and I pull it straight down and at the top you can see I put my thumb I like to put my thumb right at the top here because when I pull it straight down all I do is you can see where the end is right here and I just put pull my thumb out and I put it like that and now I'm ready to stitch. So I'm going to start my stitching right here at a quarter of an inch. And this basically is unstitched right here. I'll show you in just a second. All right. Let's go ahead. And I'm going to double back on the stitches. But it's not. I'm going to double over my stitches I'm going to cut off so I can show you so when I do my angle there's my angle and I put it up to the top just like that so it goes across the top this is open this is just kind of flap in there but you want that because later on you're going to turn that so that you can uh, go ahead and fold it over just like this and there we go I'm not holding it correctly but that's what it's going to look like it's kind of hard to hold it right like that and that's what it's going to look like just like that so it'll turn out great and now I'm going to continue And I'm going to go around all four corners. And I hope this helps. I know that I struggled for a long time with binding. I, I am going to finish all four corners. And then I'm going to show you how I join them. And uh, hopefully that helps too. Now we're coming into the end. And I'm going to go ahead and sew this down. And In my case, I'm coming down about 10 inches and I'm going to have an open space down here. I'll show you in just a minute over at the uh, cutting uh, mat. 
I'm going to come down and I do have this joint right here between two pieces. I'm going to go ahead and, and tack that down, sew it down. And that was the end of that. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that. I am really close to needing a new needle, so uh, you may have heard that. So let's go ahead and we're going to break the thread. And I'm going to take us over to the cutting mat. What we're going to do is I'm going to, I like doing this on a cutting mat because I'm going to overlap the two ends. So I always leave at least, what is that, about almost uh, 10 inches of a gap. That seems to work well for me. I want to overlap my two pieces pretty much in the middle. So I'm going to cut the end of this so that it's right on this line right here. You can choose any line, but for me, I'm going to pick this line because I'm going to then cut the other piece two and a half inches down. But I'll show you what I'm going to do. Let me go ahead and cut right here. All right, so I go just like this. And just like that. And that comes out to just right at that spot. Now I'm going to cross this over just like that. And I leave them a little bit crossed over where I can see it right there. And I want to cut the top one two and a half inches from the, uh, the bottom one's end. So I want to come down here two and a half inches. And right there, we're going to cut the top one. I, you have to be careful because you don't want to cut anything else. So you have to make sure that you're only cutting this top. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut the top straight across. Just like that. Okay, All right, I'm going to get a better cut on that because I can see it's a little bit crooked because I was filming while I was cutting. That's a whole lot better. All right, so that's two and a half inches difference. Now I'll show you back at the sewing machine how I'm going to uh, make it work. So it's really important at this stage to not get this twisted. Like you don't want this to twist over and then uh, be wrong. So what I do is I open it up, the top one. I always have the top on top. And the top on top. I always have this one coming from the right on top and I lay it just like that on my hand. Then I open this bottom one and I open it up and I want the, the pressed middle to match on both of them. So here's a pressed middle, here's a pressed middle. And I want to cross them just like that. A lot of times if I'm having trouble or I'm trying to film, <laughs> it makes it a little bit harder. I'll take a pen and I'll just poke, not poke it. I just put the pen in here and put the pen right there, just like that. And that holds the table runner together. So I can just concentrate on this and it, the binding and it's not being pulled by everything else. All right. So now I'm still have my fingers on the same thing, but what we want to do, I'm trying to get everything nice and flat for myself. I want to have these two overlap just like that, like two squares, but it's going to be a little bit up on the top and a little bit over on the bottom. So you will overlap them with a little bit extra. Now let's put this down. All right. And we are going to sew a diagonal from the top of the top one 
to the bottom of the bottom one, which is right here. <laughs> so we're just going to do a diagonal. And we're going to go through this middle part here. I'm going to double back on my stitches. And I like to keep it flat. So I'm going to pull it a little bit so it's a little bit flatter. And I'm just doing a straight line down here. And I doubled back on my stitches. I went backwards and doubled back. Now I'm going to cut off. And so that's where it is. Now, before going any further, I want to make sure that I put, did it correctly and that I didn't twist my ends, which can happen. So I'm going to take it out and pull it. I'm not going to cut off this, this extra here until I make sure that this is going to lie flat and that it is correct. And it is. So now I'm going to pull this up again and I'm going to take my scissors and I usually give a generous quarter inch. Uh, people can do different things, but for me, that's what I like to do. And I cut off this portion. Be careful not to cut off anything else because <laughs> that may not work. For me, I just, I've finger press this down just like that I'm just finger pressing it down and now I'm going to fold it and move my table runner so that I can straighten it out and here is my joint I'm going to check it again on the finger pressing make sure that it's really nice and flat um, and it is, so I'm going to start up here at the top and just continue on as if I did not uh, stop. So I'm going to put my thread down and I'm going to go two stitches forward, three stitches forward, <laughs> two or three stitches back. And now I'm going to go straight. I'm using the same uh, seam allowance that I had before. Nothing has changed. I see a little bit, there may be a little bit of play in there, maybe not. Sometimes you can be off by just like a hair. And you can have this kind of look like it's going to make a uh, fold. You don't want that, so, because I got this. That is it. And we had an almost tuck, but that's actually not a tuck. That's just a gather right there. And that can happen. I just want to say it can happen and something to look for. Uh, that is not actually a tuck. A tuck would be with it, if it crossed over and everything. That's just a gather. I, I have no problem with that at all. I think that'll be just fine. It doesn't even, there's not a gather on the other side. It was just a gather on this particular side right here. And it is fine on the other side. So I don't have a problem. There wasn't any problem with that. But if you would get a tuck, and it would cross over. That's when I do, I do take it out and I'll use the seam ripper and I will take out that space right there and then I add uh, some pins in there uh, to absorb some of the, uh, you know, I'll go ahead and I'll put pins different places 
I'll just do it around the gather. And when I go through there with pins, first of all, I only use these really thin pins. Second of all, I hand crank through it because I don't want to hit a pin. I have I have ruined, not ruined, but I have really damaged one of my sewing machines by hitting a large pin. And that was just not a happy day. This right here is simply a, a little bit of gathering on that side, but the other side is perfectly fine. But now one thing that I do is when I go to bind this, it is sewn to the front side and I will actually turn it over like this, just like that. And I will put a clip on it and I do this. Oops. <laughs> just like that. And then on the other side, I get rid of any strings that are there. I, I clip those away. So let's go ahead and do that. And I will actually use a hand, I'll use a needle and I will hand sew the back side. And that I just use a basic stitch uh, that is uh, hidden. So I, it's a basic uh, slip stitch that is hidden inside of the batting. I will do another video on how I do that and it really is a nice way of handling uh, the uh, hand binding and I do it about every quarter of an inch to every eighth of an inch depending. And next time I will show you to or the when I do that video I will show you how I do the corners because the corners are really they're really easy but it took me a while I kept doing them the hard way <laughs> and then I figured out an easier way and once I did it, it worked out really well so I will cover that next time when I cover the hand sewing part of putting the binding on so that will be a future video so watch for that if you're not already subscribed to the channel uh, you might consider subscribing and that way you'll see when I put that video on the hand binding and I'll cover how to handle the corners how to you know pull correctly for the binding and make it look really nice and how to do the hand stitching because that those are really important things to to know about in order for it to look really nice and to last a long time. So I think that's all that we have for today and I will see you next time at the sewing machine. I hope this was helpful. I will see you. Bye bye.